For his family, the last two weeks have been a living nightmare. Their son and brother Jan, who was in Ireland for the first time for a poker tournament with his fiancée, vanished without a trace. It's the worst thing a mother can go through, uh, not finding her children. The 41-year-old father of four left the Bonington Hotel in Whitehall shortly after 11am on Saturday the 9th of February. He walked along the Swords Road and was picked up on CCTV, passing the gates of Highfield Hospital just minutes later. He hasn't been seen since. While he left his passport and phone in the hotel, Mr Janssen had his wallet and credit cards. His family also believe he may have been carrying a large quantity of cash. Garthi have confirmed his credit cards haven't been used since he went missing. His brother Daniel says Jan's disappearance is bizarre and totally out of character. This is our oldest brother. He has been the rock of the family for since I can remember. When I was when I was a baby, I was he was taking care of me. This is you know, this is not only a brother, it's a friend. He's a father figure, he's a role model, he's everything you could ever ask for in a brother and um, and he would never, if some, anybody who knows John would know that he would never do this. Garthi say they've been in contact with local hospitals, taxi drivers and casinos as part of the investigation. An extensive search has also taken place in the area where he was last seen, involving the air support and dog units. There are concerns, serious concerns for his safety at this stage, as he's been missing now for over two weeks. While we have nothing to indicate that anything sinister may have happened to him, we're appealing now to the media and to the public at large for any information in relation to his disappearance. His mother says the whole family are devastated and made this appeal to Jan if he's watching. We just want you back. I don't know. I just, I miss him so much. He is, um, I can't imagine life without him. Jan's family say they won't give up hope in finding him alive and say they won't leave Ireland without him. It's unusual for him to go missing not to make contact with family either at home or here with him. He left with the clothes that he was wearing, his suitcase and his passport mobile phone are in his room. I'm very hopeful. Uh, we had a lot of people yesterday, really helpful people. We had people this morning asking if they could go search again today. Just keep an uh, open eye, check your CCTV footage, try to remember. I know it's hard two weeks be back in time and see if you, ha if you have any recollection of anything that happened that was out of the ordinary and just, yeah, help us find this bro our brother. CCTV footage last picked up Mr. Johnson walking northbound on the Swords Road here outside Highfield Healthcare. Gardy say that while there have been several sightings of men with similar bills, there have been no concrete findings and have appealed for the public for any information they may have. These are the last known movements of Jan Jonsson, leaving the Bonington Hotel in North Dublin almost four weeks ago. Minutes later, he was picked up on CCTV outside Highfield Hospital. He hasn't been seen since. Today, his heartbroken mother retraced his steps as she tries to figure out what happened her firstborn son. Garthi say he left his passport and phone behind him, but had his credit cards, which haven't been used since. However, he may have been carrying a large sum of cash. He doesn't fight or, or he doesn't... Uh put himself in some dangerous situation. Um, he is, he likes poker. He's not, you know, he likes it and he, he enjoys it. He knows uh, he keep the money aside, which he uh, has decided to use. And he is very aware of that he can lose it all. So no, that is not the problem. An extensive search has taken place in the area where he was last seen, involving the air support and dog units, as well as the civil defence. It's obviously been a very difficult four weeks, probably the worst four weeks of your life. Oh, yes. Do you think something bad has happened to him at this stage? You say it's so out of character, he would have made sure, if he could, that he would have made contact with somebody. Yeah. We look at... We are uh, checking all possibilities. Um, when you have no idea where he is, everything can happen. Um, so we just take it from there. Uh, the only thing is um, we have to find him and then we take it. 
You're very welcome to uh, Radio Spoil. Mick Rooney, investigative uh, journalist. Um, this is a slightly different format uh, to what we do with normal cases. I want to stress from the outset here, this is not intended as a, a deep dive uh, timeline uh, analysis. It's rather a summary of a case and updates on it. Um, unlike a lot of the cases that I cover, the case of Jan Janssen, uh, it isn't a case that came immediately under my radar. Some of the cases I've covered, um, you know, I've been following them for months, years. This is a case that really only came under my radar uh, about two or three months ago. And I was aware that the uh, family were coming here to Ireland uh, to do another uh, 2024 appeal for their missing loved one. Uh, Jan Janssen uh, listen without further ado I'm just going to go straight into the case uh, you'll have seen something of an introductory to the case uh, from the uh, thumbnails and title and the intro news piece so look let's just get on with it um, Jan Janssen age 41 was a taxi driver from Iceland he was in Dublin for a poker tournament when he disappeared without trace. He arrived in Dublin on February 8th, 2019, along with a number of other players attending the tournament from Iceland. Now, just as a, as a certain types of gambling are prohibited in Iceland, including card game casinos for poker, as well as online gambling. As an avid poker player and poker players, Jan and his fiancée, Christiane Gudjansson daughter, or Jana for short, were regular travellers to tournaments in Scandinavia and Europe. The Dublin Poker Festival in February 2019 was a perfect occasion to enjoy some table play and essentially also have a fun holiday centred around the game that he both loved. It's important to note that the couple were not planning on spending the whole time of their holiday at the poker festival itself, where it was situated in the Bonington Hotel, rather just a few days over that weekend. Uh, now you can look here at the uh, poker uh, festival dates. Uh, I think it went uh, from early to mid-February. Uh, the Dublin Poker Festival very has its themes and associated events. Uh, the Poker Festival 2019, specifically in this case that we're dealing with, actually ran for 10 days from February the 7th to the 17th. Now, numerous media reports that I've looked at uh, seem to have conflated the period of their, the, the, the couple's Irish stay with the length of the poker festival itself. Um, that's the Bonington Hotel in North Dublin. It's out by the Swords Road. On the morning of Friday, February the 8th, 2019, John arrived in Dublin and checked into the Bonington Hotel, the venue for the poker festival itself, over the next two weeks. With work commitments, Yana could not travel the same day and instead arrived the following morning, Saturday, February the 9th, 2019. And look, yes, I have read some uh, erroneous and unstantiated reports that Yana was somehow held in Dublin at passport control for the night. <coughs> Nowhere can I find any corroborating evidence of that. She checked into their pre-booked uh, hotel room and found Jan asleep on the Saturday morning uh, and she had her key card when she booked in. He had been up practicing with poker friends and drinking until about 3am the previous night. There were two organised small poker events that previous evening on Jan's arrival. Now I looked into this. There's no official record of Jan Janssen entering either of the two events on the Friday evening and just from this image here 
you can see the two particular uh, small tournaments that were being held on that evening, Friday, February the 8th. John did not participate in either of those official tournaments. In fact, in poker tournament, I suppose poker terms, the buy-in for those games was, was relatively small and the largest winning pot that evening was €920 Euro to the winner. So that's not exactly uh, Las Vegas uh, high-stakes uh, terms. Um, let's take a look at the uh, CCTV from uh, that Friday night. Um, that's uh, an image still. So we know that Jan was there that evening. Now, if Jan Janssen did play a game of poker that evening. It was certainly not under the registration of the Dublin Poker Festival events. and It would have had to be in some sort of non-tournament unofficial game. We know he was definitely at the activities that night because he's on CCTV. <coughs> now, I looked at the um, participation of Icelandic players at the Dublin Poker Festival that year. But nowhere, at least in the records that I looked at, did I find any Jan Jansen registered for that uh, Dublin Poker Festival. Uh, so, at that stage, it looks like that evening he hadn't even registered as an entry for any of the official forthcoming events during the weekend or the following week. In reality, and despite media stories of this so-called four thousand euro lost on the Friday night he arrived. I can also find no evidence that any such serious stakes game occurred, at least in the hotel. Nor any fracas or dispute after he tried to leave his supposed game. The entire night of activities is captured on CCTV by the Bonington Hotel security staff, at least in the official hotel. I cannot rule out that he went and had some official uh, cash tournament or cash-in game in a hotel room with friends. Or I can't discount that. <coughs> if anything, from the accounts of his fiance Yana and family, his tournament participation was not starting until Yana arrived on the Saturday morning and they both saw it still as a holiday as well. From global global poker rankings, at the time, Jan Janssen is recorded as winning less than five hundred euro in the year up to twenty nineteen in total. That's all time winnings uh, for that previous year, and barely inside the top half million poker players in the world. Um, yeah, let's take an insert from the eleven o three to eleven o seven. Um. CCTV. Now, look, what we what is known and did happen is that John left his room at the Bonington Hotel at 11.03 a.m. on the Saturday morning. That would have been the 9th of February. While his fiancée had arrived and was downstairs having a coffee and he went for a walk. He was later picked up again at 11.05 on CCTV, departing the hotel revolving doors. His walk was undertaken without his wallet, passport and mobile phone left in his room. <coughs> we have the CCTV footage. At 11.07am he is picked up passing by the outside t uh, CCTV from McGettigan's pub and that's kind of like way back in in the distance. Now I want to stress about that mobile phone as well that's mentioned. Uh, according to his family John wasn't really uh, big into technology and he he wouldn't be a person that necessarily would have a mobile phone with him all the time he he wasn't you know hugely into that um so look that's the bonington hotel um uh map uh you can see where mcgadigan's is slightly inset so to be crystal clear and maybe shatter some conspiracy uh, theories that I've seen online. Nobody claims he walked across and entered McGettigan's pub. There seemed to be some initial early news reports that he was in McGettigan's 
uh, that that there seems no evidence for that. There's absolutely no CCTV of John Johnson ever being inside McGettigan's pub itself, nor any secret liaison speculated in the media. But that's the nonsense you get uh, when you spend uh, too much time on Reddit, on X, uh, Twitter. In fact, about eight minutes later, I'm pretty much bang on the time you'd expect from walking. There's John on CCTV again. He's smoking a cigarette. And at this stage now, he's passing the Highfield Healthcare Centre. This doesn't exactly seem like the movements and activities of an amateur poker player arriving in Dublin for the first time. But somehow, if you believe the media nonsense and speculation that he was some shady gambling high roller and criminals and other dubious characters would pay roll him to enter and win fabulous amounts of money as a return for them. Unless you're an elite player at the top of your profession in poker, it isn't a game for financial investment sharks. And further, and one other speculative line of inquiry was that perhaps John was entrusted with entry registration fees, money for buy-ins to games for other Icelandic players on the trip for the poker festival. Because remember, there were a number of other Icelandic players uh, travelling there uh, to Dublin for this uh, Dublin poker festival. And inevitably, John shared a flight uh, with them over. And that somehow, during that time, on the Friday evening, he squandered the money in some unofficial games, uh, leaving him to face some very disgruntled players the following morning. Uh, Where's our registration fee? Where's our buy-in money? What the hell's going on? You didn't spend it, uh, lose it all. But here's the problem. I I can find no evidence of this. No evidence that John was a, a poker club treasurer entrusted with such responsibilities. And it makes no sense that other more, maybe in fairness, accomplished Icelandic players would just happily on this trip hand over thousands of euros in cash to him. If anything, participants at organised poker tournaments are generally advised not to be carrying large sums of cash and instead only use debit or credit cards to purchase betting chips. Because um, you can imagine a room uh, with a lot of people there with wads of cash in their pocket. Uh, easy target for anybody to waltz into a hotel with a fake gun or whatever or a knife and basically hand over the money uh, girls and boys and I'm out of here with a hell of a lot of water cash and that's one of the reasons why security uh, advise you not to do that at poker tournaments <coughs> for the non-familiar and you may have heard these terms in cash games players exchange money for chips poker chips and there is usually a minimum and maximum buy-in amount, depending on the stakes. In tournament play, players buy in for the same amount and are all usually given the same amount of tournament chips. So it's like a you all start out on a fair level. But dispense with the illusion that there are poker tables at tournaments with wads and wads containing thousands of euro in cash, you know, piled up on the side of them. You know, a story like this, unfortunately, journalists and ordinary people spend far too much time on Reddit swallowing and believing any first-hand accounts they read into the background of this case and don't have access to accurate information and statements. So let's let's try and get back to some reality here. John Janssen was a taxi driver from Iceland and the father of four children. I think two of them were stepchildren, two of them his own children. He liked playing poker as an amateur player. At six foot, he could handle himself, enjoyed life, understood risk taking, but don't be fooled into thinking he was some sort of chess genius of the poker world. He wasn't. He was a small time amateur player. He doesn't have any illustrious and wealthy career on the poker circuit among Icelandic players. Um, I did actually find a record of Jana um, as a poker player 
and yet oddly I couldn't find official global records of Jan in a lot of the tournaments that I looked at they that they would have travelled with. So with no respect to Jan, he'd probably be the absolute last person you'd ask to win you a few quid and you know quickly pay back money he owed you uh, from his winnings and poker table prowess. If anything, looking at those global poker records, his fiance actually seems to fare a little bit better in tournaments. So here's the rope. Serious poker players, even in cash games, playing for high stakes, never play and mess about with fellow players who can't and never will be able to pay their stakes and debts. That's why they play in controlled tournaments and earn a living at it. And over time, the elite players rise to the top. You lose, you pay. You have already bought your chips. In the poker world, officially or casual games, you don't play in a table when your opponent doesn't have an arse in his trousers and is on holiday. One of the gifts of talented poker players is reading an opponent, watching them on other poker tables. Buy-ins are key indicators for poker players of the caliber and level of their opponents and they can spot the bluffers and those with too much money to lose. Um, This is, I think, a missing poster of a yawn in the quite early days. So by February the 10th, 2019, Sunday, Jan Jansen is reported missing in Ireland by his fiance. A search is started by Gardaí and critical hotel traffic and retail CCTV footage is gathered. Much of it is of significant quality. And here's the thing. Casinos invest a great deal in CCTV and security equipment. There's no evidence to guarantee that John was attacked or murdered. They don't eliminate the possibility, but they can't find any evidence of it. Now, speculation also centred around the story that Jan left the game table after losing a significant amount of money, it was estimated to be two to four thousand euro, and he was then confronted by players when he attempted to leave the game. Gardy trawled hours of video hotel footage and they found no such incident occurred that night or early morning. Again, I want to stress, I'm not saying something didn't happen in a hotel bedroom in uh, an unofficial game, but it certainly didn't happen in the poker hall where the tournament was being held. (coughs) The last known existence of Jan Janssen is after 11am on Saturday, February 9, 2019, when Jan leaves his room at 11.03am, heads downstairs and through the revolving doors. Beyond the Bonington Hotel at 11.07am, he's picked up at high, well I think it was slightly after, Uh, he's picked up heading towards the Highfield, I think it's a care hospital, uh, and up the Swords Road, possibly, not definite, because he goes out of CCTV footage towards Collins Avenue. So we last see him lighting a cigarette. His demeanour suggests nothing uh, untoward. If anything, he appears to be casually walking without any particular purpose, showing no signs of inebriation or stress. Now, I did ask a couple of uh, behavioural uh, people that I know to to look at this footage, and it's inconclusive. I, I basically got two completely different um, takes on it. So, no conclusion. One suggested John was casually out for a stroll and clearing the cobwebs, possibly singing to himself. Another picked up signs of bodily agitation, that his mouth movements were less about maybe singing, but more sort of talking to him, sort of sternly talking to himself and pensive. So look, take what you will from that, because I'm no uh, behavioural um, expert. There are two very different takes. Watch it yourself and and make your own conclusion. I've watched the CCTV um, dozens of times. I must say, I'm now leaning towards the former and that he just wanted to get out for fresh air and clear his head of whatever was on his mind for the tournament day ahead. Or perhaps one other possibility was that after the arrival of his fiancée that morning, maybe asking questions, what did you do the previous night, how did you get on, um, that somehow unsettled him. I don't know. For whatever reason, 
He didn't join Yana for a coffee downstairs in the hotel after she arrived, and instead, having slept, he went outside for a walk. He does not enter the nearby Centra supermarket, and there's no record of him on CCTV there. To me, this doesn't suggest he was going out for a quick maybe sandwich, rather than spending more money in the the hotel uh, on expensive food, or he was out to buy cigarettes, because well, we at least know he had cigarettes with him. Um, so at that stage, missing, and the alert going out on the Sunday that he's missing, uh, over the following week, more than 13 family uh, and friends of Jan arrive in Ireland and start a concerted campaign for information from the Irish public. Jan's fiancée, Jana, good Johnson daughter, and Hannah, his mother, eventually hired an Irish pri- private investigator, Liam Brady, to help track any sign of John. I am not aware that um, the PI Liam ever really turned up anything of significance and I, I, to my knowledge he's not even working on the case anymore now during the Garda investigation two written anonymous leads were sent to them they've yet to establish who wrote the correspondence to them, the Garda uh, detailing threats and debts that John owed the authors of this correspondence have never been identified and the Gardaí cannot eliminate these as leads. And we're going to talk about more about these leads uh, coming up shortly. Um, there was another uh, report put out, I believe this was by the Independent, I don't know whether it was the weekly, uh, uh, daily uh, Independent morning newspaper or the um, weekly Sunday edition. Um, the family of Jan Janssen refuted some allegations contained in leaked media reports, one particularly coming from an Irish independent journalist. These claims were later established by Gardaí investigators into Jan Janssen's disappearance to be wholly unsubstantiated and poorly sourced from a supposed prison informant after liaising with Atlantic, is, um, uh, Icelandic authorities and Interpol. I suppose this turned out to be another case of a media hound fed with snippets of board feed and runs to an editor with a story discovered and not properly checked out. In February 2024, on the fifth anniversary of the disappearance of Jan Janssen, the family renewed their campaign in Ireland. Uh, we're going to take a, uh, a listen to um, a video insert of... Um, Uh, Jan's uh, family. The family of an Icelandic man who went missing in Dublin five years ago say there's been no trace of him since he disappeared. To mark the fifth anniversary, Jan Jansson's brother and sister joined Garthi today in making a renewed appeal for the public's assistance in trying to trace him. Jan Jansson was captured on CCTV leaving the Bonington Hotel on the Swords Road in Whitehall at around 11am on Saturday, February 9th, 2019. He was last seen a short time later walking by the entrance to Highfield Hospital in the direction of the Collins Avenue Junction. There has been no trace since that day. The then 41-year-old was in Ireland with his fiancée for a holiday and to attend a poker tournament. Speaking at the Bonington today, his brother and sister who travelled from Iceland said his disappearance remains a mystery. I mean, it's been five years and uh, I mean, time goes by really, really fast. Uh, from the moment he went disappearing, it's been, all, it's been a roller coaster of emotions for the family as a whole, but wherever he may be, he is still the yes. rock of the family. Garthi here at Ballymun Station say they followed over 270 lines of inquiry, taken numerous statements and viewed hours of CCTV footage as part of this inquiry. But despite extensive searches and the ongoing investigations, Mr Janssen has yet to be located. During the course of the investigation, the investigation team have received two items of anonymous correspondence and the contents of which have been assessed. The Garda investigation team are appealing to the author or authors or any other person in relation to the correspondence to make direct contact with us in the strictest confidence. 
Five years on, Jan's family say they're hoping to get closure. Of course we hope he's alive, you know, mm -hmm. and he would just come with a tail between his legs. But for my part, I think it's not like that, you know. I, I just want to find him, uh, you know, find what happened so we can all say goodbye. Regardless of whatever happened to Jan, they say they now just want to bring their brother home. For Gallo Brown, RTE News. Now, the updates to this case. Tuesday, February the 13th, 2024, five days, excuse me, five years later, Gardy announced that they had commenced a forensic search of Santry de Semene, also known as Santry Park, on the north side of Dublin to conduct dog and water searches of the area. The park is located just three kilometres away from where Jan Janssen was last seen alive. The operation involved specialist search teams focused on wooded areas and a lake in the park. This followed on from two items of anonymous written correspondence that we referred to above, the contents of which uh, were assessed in recent weeks this year. Um, during the afternoon on the first day of the search in Santry Park, a cadaver dog uh, used indicative uh, and positive signals from one area of the park woodland. The dog was removed and two additional cadaver dogs were used again that afternoon. Both the two additional dogs independently signalled also the same spot that the first dog had. And at that point, really, the guardian sessions have to do further analysis on that area. The area was cordoned off for a more intensive forensic search, including the use of ground anthropological, anthropological scanning equipment to exclude any possibility that the area had been disturbed or dug up in recent years. Search at a public park in Dublin has resumed as part of the investigation into the disappearance of a 41-year-old Icelandic man in the capital five years ago. Jan Jonsson was last seen walking past the entrance to Highfield Hospital on the Swords Road in Dublin in February 2019. Gardaí at Ballymun, supported by the water unit and specialist cadaver dogs, began the search at Santry Domain yesterday morning. Well, let's get more from our crime correspondent, Paul Reynolds, who's there. And Paul, I understand there's been a development this lunchtime. That's correct, Vivian. Just in the last half hour, as you can see behind us here, the Gardaí have sealed off uh, quite a substantial uh, tract of land just beside uh, the forest area in front of the lake. Now, it's been sealed off uh, with Garda tape. It, it's to be preserved for a full forensic examination tomorrow. Now, what appears to have happened is that uh, one of those cadaver dogs involved in the search has reacted to something uh, that they've discovered in the tract of land here. Now, the Gardaí are stressing caution in relation to this. Uh, they say it could be something simple, like somebody could have been out for a walk or a run and may have cut their foot and left a blood stain, and the dog could have reacted to that. However, uh, they have to uh, take it seriously. They have to check out what it is. So what they have decided to do is preserve this area as a potential crime scene uh, and carry out a full forensic examination with the Garda Technical Bureau tomorrow. Well, Gardaí have been carrying out digs today as part of this search, which is now concentrated on the wooded area behind me, just near the lake in Santry Domain. Members of the Garda technical team were on site from early this morning. Then that was followed by the Garda cadaver dog and then Gardaí with shovels and slash hooks to clear the vegetation from the area. This is the third day of the search, which began on Tuesday with quite a wide sweep of the parkland with specialist Garda teams, including the Garda underwater unit and the Garda dog unit. Of course, this search being carried carried out as a result of two pieces of anonymous correspondence that Gardaí received uh, in relation to Jan Janssen's disappearance. Now, it's understood that these letters were quite vague, but there was enough information in them to allow Gardaí to concentrate the search on this area. Um, the Gardaí released a statement to the media um, today, as I record, Friday, February the 16th, 2024. Um, and I think we can conclude from that this has not gone anywhere. Gardaí searching the Santry Park woodland area state that after their four day operation, search operation, the search has yielded no results and nothing of significance was recovered from the site. 
They appealed once again for the author of the two letters of correspondence to contact them again in confidence. That's where we are on the case of Jan Janssen. An Icelandic man who came to Dublin in February 2019 to attend a Dublin poker festival with his fiancée and disappeared sometime after 11am in the morning the following day of his arrival and there's been no trace of him since. That is where the case is. That is the update. If I have any further updates on this case I will I'd likely include them in the comments. Uh, unless there's something very significant I don't plan on doing any additional um, video updates for this case. Uh, once again, God bless. Take care. We'll see you again uh, soon. It's likely going to be probably early March when we do our next uh, timeline. I do have a, a feature coming up um, next week. Uh, that case is regarding one of Ireland's uh, youngest um, and longest serving cases of a missing child. Uh, I'll leave you to uh, guess uh, which case that is um, I will update you in the uh, community section of the uh, Radio Spoil uh, YouTube channel um, later this week about more details of that take care, God bless, see you soon